Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, we will do a rapid fire review of the CCS cases regarding the musculocutaneous along with the hematology and oncology systems. And by mastering these cases, you will be able to score greater than 90% on these cases in the CCS for step 3. If you like this content, please like, share, subscribe and follow for more. And let's begin. So first of all, in the musculocutaneous uh, system, you need to know what is the different diagnosis for weakness so if a patient presents with you to you with weakness what are the four main things that you have to think about so first of all we have the most common myasthenia gravis next next off we have lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome and chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy and the fourth one is motor neuron disease so you can like sum them up or make them into sets then myasthenia gravis along with lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome in one and chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy along with motor neuron disease in the other. So let's begin with myasthenia gravis. That if, if you have this patient who have, has this like progressive weakness that um, that aggravates during the day, so what are we going to do work up this patient for, right? And in the diagnosis, we have what are the main goals that we have for diagnosis. The main goals would be to do something radiologically, to do something in the blood test, of course, the antibody or immunological test to confirm the diagnosis and to differentiate it from another uh, other uh, diseases such as Lambert Eaton right so in the confirmatory test for the blood or immunology that is acetylcholine receptor antibodies and then in the radiological test we are going to rule out thymoma with x-ray chest or CT of the chest because we know that myasthenia gravis is commonly associated with the thymoma and once the thymoma is removed the patient becomes cured Next off, we have uh, differentiating it from Lambert Eaton, for which we are going to do electromyography. So these are the three main goals for diagnosis. Next off, we have the treatment. Again, treatment can be divided into the medical treatment and surgical treatment since it's associated with the thymoma. So for the surgical treatment, we are going to do a surgery consult for the thymoma after we find the thymoma on X-ray chest and CT of the chest. But for the medical management, we have again two goals. One is the symptomatic management, and one is the specific management. So symptomatic management would be with pyridostigmine which will help to improve the weakness and then the specific management would be the control of the uh, the control of the antibodies the antibodies that are causing all this all these problems by giving prednisone next off we have sle so for sle you can remember the diagnostic steps in the form of a b and c and for a we have three a's then one b and two c right so three a's means the most common test for a any sort of disease that is uh, that is involving like autoantibodies is ANA and after there's two specific and sensitive tests for SLE anti DSDNA anti Smith antibodies next off with the B we are going to do bone tensiometry whenever we are going to start the patient on steroids because the patient is going to be getting steroids on for long term so you are going to do a bone tensiometry and after this the two C's which are C3 and C4 next off we have the treatment so again for treatment the medical management and the consultation Consultations. For the medical management, we have methylprednisone. Again, we are going to control the autoantibody damage that is happening. And next, we are also going to give hydroxychloroquine. And you already know that hydroxychloroquine can cause ophthalmological changes. Therefore, we are going to do an ophthalmology consult to establish the baseline before starting hydroxychloroquine. And of course, we are going to consult rheumatology and nephrology because lupus nephritis is a very common complication. And of course, like you can check the patient if she is having some sort of pleuritic or pericardic chest pain and espluritis or pericarditis, then you can also do a pulmonology or cardiology consult. And in the preventive measures, of course, you know that the Miller rash of SLE is basically caused by photosensitivity. So therefore, you are going to advise the patient to avoid sun. Next off, we have rheumatoid arthritis. For it, again, the diagnosis is going to be divided into some sort of blood tests, which, which we are going to confirm the diagnosis, some sort of radiological tests, which will be supportive in the diagnosis, and some sort of joint tests, which will help us basically rule out some other conditions, right? And some other blood tests, which, which, with which you can rule out some other inflammatory arthritis as well, right? So first of all, the blood test for the confirmation would be ANA-A and A, along with rheumatoid factor or NTCCP.
these are the three blood tests next off we have the radiological test of x-ray of the hands and fingers and then for the joint we can do arthrocentesis with synovial fluid culture and analysis and one important thing is that you have to avoid arthroscopy and biopsy since the diagnosis of RA can just be made by these blood tests and these joint tests so we don't want to do the invasive test of arthroscopy and biopsy so avoid it at all costs and of course you're going to rule out other inflammatory arthritis conditions such as arthritis caused by chlamydia and gnoria by doing the chlamydia gnoria test along with you can do uric acid levels to rule out gout and then in the treatment you know that again there are two main stages of treatment one is giving ansaids for symptomatic relief and one is giving a sort of demard with of course monitoring of the blood levels with of of cbc levels and the pulmonary function test and the liver function test when you start the methotrexate because it's a disease modifying drug but it has a lot of toxicity right on the blood on the pulmonary system and the liver functions as well right so one is ibuprofen symptomatic relief another is the definitive management with uh, the demands which for and we are going to begin with methotrexate we are not going to begin with some adalimumab or some other biologics because they are for refractory cases next off you have ankylosing spondylitis again for ankylosing spondylitis divided into blood and radiological along with some genetic association right so for the blood we are going to do rheumatoid factor for the radiological test we will do x-ray pelvis and for the genetics we can do hla b27 and for b27 antigen and for the treatment we have the biologic agents tnf inhibitors infliximab or adalimumab next off we have gonococcal arthritis again for any arthritis keep these three main things at the back of your mind blood test radiological tests and then joint or urine tests right so for the blood tests we are going to do std panel or lyme serology since arthritis can be caused by std or due to lyme disease as well next off you have a, a radiological test of course wherever the patient is having the arthritis we are going to do an x-ray of that area so in this situation x-ray of the knee and then for the urine you can do urine uric acid and for the joint arthrocentesis with synovial fluid cell count grams stain culture and then analysis for the treatment once you have confirmed it's gonococcal arthritis one is the symptomatic management and the other is the definitive treatment in the symptomatic management just the pain control with acetaminophen and in the definitive treatment we have to control the infection by giving ceftriaxone and frequently since we know that gonococcal arthritis is also associated with chlamydia infection therefore we are going to give doxycycline or azithromycin depending upon whether the patient is pregnant or not if the patient is pregnant or uh, the or the patient is like support of a uh, sort of like a young child who can be affected by doxycycline then we are going to give azithromycin otherwise for adults generally we can give doxycycline those who are non-pregnant next off we have gout again for doubt the goals of diagnosis are the same as for gonococcal arthritis remember blood urine joint as well as radiological test so radiological test x-ray of the affected joint for the blood std panel along with lyme serology which will also include gonococcal and chlamydia uh, chlamydia testing next off for the urine we are going to do urine uric acid which will confirm gout and on the joint as well the arthrocentesis with synovial fluid analysis will also tell us about the crystals for gout bifringent crystals for gout next off we have the treatment so in the treatment the mainstay of treatment for this like for an acute Acute attack is ibuprofen, right? And that would be NSAIDs. And next off, we are going to discontinue any drugs that are precipitating these attacks. And we know one specific drug that is associated with hyperuricemia is thiazide diuretics. They cause hyperglue, which is they can cause hyperglycemia, hyperlipidemia, hyperuricemia, right? Therefore, we have to get rid of thiazide diuretics. And instead, we can put the patient on losartan. And of course, for the post-exposure prophylaxis for preventing the gout attack. from recurring we can use allopurinol right so for acute attacks always ibuprofen or ansets and for preventing the recurrence allopurinol and of course since it is caused by high uric acid levels so any way we can reduce the uric acid levels and that would be by limiting the alcohol and limit a high purine or meat diet 
Next off, you have osteoporosis. So if the patient is presenting with a foot fracture and has low BMI, so again, we are going to divide it into the blood tests and the radiological tests. For the blood tests, we can do vitamin D levels. Probably patient has vitamin D deficiency because of which he is having like weakened bones. And next off, you have radiological tests of x-ray of the foot and DEXA scan to find out whether the patient has osteoporosis. And the treatment, two main stages of treatment. One is the vitamin supplementation and then another treatment, specific treatment for osteoporosis process so vitamin d along with a landronate bisphosphonate treatment is the mainstay of treatment for osteoporosis and the prevention would be we are going to advise exercise program that is going to help strengthen and mineralize the bones and prevent the bone mineral loss next off we have fractures of course wherever the fracture is we are going to do a diagnostic x-ray and in the treatment we are going to give uh, give ansets and ibuprofen and of course like this is the medical management in order to remove the pain and in the surgical management if it is a displaced fracture and an open fracture that needs to be operated upon then we are going to of course consult the orthopedic surgery for open fixation and uh, like uh, open fixation and reduction otherwise if it's a closed fracture and it's not displaced then we can just go on with the cast next off we have temporal arthritis so again for temporal arthritis the same sort of format is going to go with us some blood tests some radiological tests and since this is an inflammation that is going on right so in order to establish the diagnosis just like we did the diagnosis for cancers we have to establish some histopathological diagnosis on a biopsy right so blood test radiological test and some histopathological diagnosis so let's see the blood test that would be ESR and CRP in the radiological test we have two main stays one is CT head or MRI two rule out other causes of vision loss right that it's this vision loss is not being caused by some other cause so we're going to do ct head or mri and then we can also do a chest x-ray because temporal arthritis is also associated with thoracic aortic aneurysms therefore we will do a chest x-ray in order to look for whether we can find some sort of widening of the aorta or not and then the specific histopathological diagnosis will be by doing a temporal artery biopsy next off we have the treatment the treatment is similar to that of osteoporosis process in which we were given vitamin d calcium along with prednisone right and always know that if the patient is at risk of vision loss and he is presenting with blurring of the vision and you are suspecting that this is temporal arthritis we will not wait for the temporal artery biopsy to be done rather we will give iv methyl prednisone even before doing like the diagnostic test of temporal artery biopsy right okay so but in this situation once there is no risk of visual loss then we can give oral prednisone vitamin d and calcium which are always given along with the steroids and we are going to consult ophthalmology since there is a risk of vision loss and consult rheumatology since this is a rheumatology case next off we are going to begin hematology and oncology so whenever you have hematology or oncology it means there is there might be some sort of cancer diagnosis so always remember to counsel the patient regarding the cancer diagnosis and always remember to do a ct or a pet scan to flick for the meds and besides this always remember the other three mainstays for the goals of diagnosis which you can remember in the form of some sort of blood test if the patient has some sort of cea ca99 any sort of like a uh, any sort of tumor market that you can find in the blood and in the next off would be the radiological diagnosis of that particular site along with looking for the meds with ct or pad and of course the histopathological diagnosis with a biopsy and of course call, always cancer the patient regarding the cancer diagnosis so first of all we have g6pd deficiency and then the goals of diagnosis would be first of all to establish that the patient actually has hemolysis and that establishing the hemolysis can be done by doing a bilirubin levels for, to look for the indirect hyper, hyperbilirubinemia and we can do a Coombs test which might be positive if the patient has been taking some sort of drugs that are causing the hemolysis. Similarly LDH will also be increased as a marker of hemolysis and a haptoglobin will be decreased. So these are the general blood tests that you can do to confirm what? To confirm the hemolysis first of all. So this is our first goal of the diagnosis that we will confirm the hemolysis by doing bilirubin levels Coombs test 
test along with haptoglobin in LDH levels. Next off, we are going to confirm the diagnosis of G6PD by doing G6PD enzyme levels. And this can be avoided in an acute attack and can be done after three months because sometimes the level of G6PD levels in an acute attack might be normal. And next off, we are going to rule out some sort of coagulation disorder by doing a PTT. And the treatment, the mainstays of treatment are some symptomatic management and that would be of course by circulatory support, by giving fluid since there is acute hemolysis. So we want to dilute that hemolysis that is taking place and of course like to, to further dilute the blood if the fluids is not sufficient then we can do a type and cross match and give the packed RBCs if the hemoglobin is less than 7 grams because this will help with the symptomatic anemia along with it will dilute the blood that is actively going on him, go, uh, going through hemolysis right so fluids type and cross match along with rbc transfusion if the packed rbc is transfusion if the hemoglobin is less than seven grams and in the prevention we will prevent any such thing which can cause hemolysis in the future again so one thing that is known to cause hemolysis is fava beans so the patient is going to avoid fava beans along with we are going to counsel the patient regarding the side effect of different medication that he should like tell all the physicians beforehand that he has g6pd deficiency and therefore the medications that can cause uh, the, that can basically cause hemolysis in these patients should be avoided so we are going to counsel regarding the medication side effects next off we have hodgkin's disease so Hodgkin's disease can basically present with lymph node enlargement as well as night sweats and in the diagnosis again we are going to divide the diagnosis into radiological diagnosis and some blood tests right so and of course the histopathological diagnosis since Hodgkin's lymphoma is a type of lymphoma right so it's a cancer so we're going to divide into blood radiological and histopathological diagnosis so in the blood test we are going to rule out some other conditions that might cause light lymph node enlargement and night sweats right and that would be specifically we are going to rule out and do an HIV test and EBV titers to rule out infectious mononucleosis. Next off with the radiological test we will do a chest x-ray in order to you know confirm the lymphadenopathy and then the PET scan once we are suspecting cancer in order to find out like what's the extent of the cancer and then of course the biopsy of the lymph nodes to confirm the diagnosis right and then the treatment of course we are going to consult Hemong since there is so much generalized lymphadenopathy it cannot be Operated surgically. So, this is one specific case where chemotherapy is the mainstay of treatment, specifically with the ABVD regimen. So, we are going to consult him on for further management of Hodgkin's lymphoma. And that concludes our rapid fire review of musculocutaneous as well as hematology systems. I hope that you benefited from this video. If you like this content, please like, share, and subscribe and follow for more. And I'll see you in the next video. Happy studying! Thank you.